Hi, this Tinky. Is Tinky. She's my co-host. She's a rescue. She just turned one. I can talk about cats for days. You just Me ask the questions. <laughs> Guys, you are going to love my guest for today. She is a functional medicine nutritionist, yogi, cat lover, and a former beauty pageant winner. Please welcome Miss Charlene. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. I can't wait to share some of the knowledge I am that's beaming out of me. There's a lot of nutritionists out there, but I love that your focus is on this like Eastern holistic medicine. So can you tell us a little bit about your approach and how that's different from Western holistics? So I really turned to the Eastern side of nutrition and medicine when I felt that Western medicine wasn't really a good fit for me and wasn't giving me the solutions that I needed. And so that all started in 2008 when I was misdiagnosed with cancer. And so instead of the traditional therapies of chemotherapy and radiation, I said, no, there's more to this. I have more control um, than I, I, I think I do. So I jumped into Eastern herbalism, uh, functional nutrition, yoga, meditation, energy healing, everything that felt right, anything that I was drawn to. It felt like night and day, Emily. It was a total lifestyle change, but also it felt like this heavy, burden and weight had been lifted and then the amazing amount of clarity and energy and just another level of being that I can't ex describe evolved from at that and that's something I want everybody to feel. Can you take us through that process like what was going on in your life at that time that made you think oh I should go and get this checked out leading to that diagnosis and leading to you know you finding that willpower to overcome it. So it all started with this little pea-sized lump that within a month grew into one of those large sized grapes. And it was in my lower left leg. And I thought, well, this grew way too fast. I better get this checked out. So they did a biopsy and I went to the top dermatologist in San Diego at the time. And she sent it to a lab and the labs came back and said, we're sorry, this is a very aggressive form of um, cancer. At the time, I didn't question to send it to other labs, more prestigious labs. I thought, okay, this is my fate. I understand. Let's talk about all the different options and treatments and chemotherapy, radiation. That's not enough for me. There's more that I can do. So I started to delve into reading topics on functional nutrition, specifically Chinese nutrition which incorporates all the herbs but also talks about energy the flow of energy the trapped emotions in the body um, and how you can move and do certain things to get the energy flowing and so along with that I found yoga and meditation and I paired that with the functional nutrition and herbalism and just one by one different types of issues in my body just started to lift and remember this was a misdiagnosis so it was all in my head that I was sick and as soon as I started changing into this lifestyle and I started feeling better um, I felt oh my gosh you know there's there's something to this and one night I was meditating and I got this insight that I need to question those biopsies so I sent them to big, big cancer centers, MD Anderson, um, Emory University, and they all came back negative. But before they came back negative, I made a promise to the universe saying, if they're negative, I'm going to turn around and dedicate my life to teaching these amazing ancient remedies of living and eating that has been around for thousands of years in, uh, specific, in many different cultures. So... Uh, what's why wouldn't someone want to choose that ancient natural way of living rather than what we're being fed and told nutrition for cancer is is tricky because it's not just nutrition that you have to do it's also um, a lifestyle and it's a mindset that you are going to beat cancer you're a thousand percent sure you're gonna beat it and with that kind of confidence you can you can do almost anything it's all about the law of attraction as well. What do you mean by law of attraction? It's about setting the intention that you are going to 
manifest what you want, putting the time and energy into it. And that brings you in alignment with what you want. Now, earlier you mentioned it's about lifestyle. If the viewers don't take away anything, hopefully this is the one thing that they take away, but in a few words, what should that lifestyle look like? The lifestyle should look like a different mindset with how you view food. So there's a quote by Heather Morgan that I've used many, many times, and it's every bite you take, you're either fighting disease or you're feeding it. And a lot of people give into instant gratification and have lost the purpose and knowledge of their connection with food, that it's to help heal you, it's to help nurture you, help keep you alive, and it's turned into what's delicious, what's affordable, etc. And so, in one big takeaway would be to reset your mind and your purpose and connection with food and see it more as functional and medicinal rather than just what is going to keep you alive and is tasty. So this is where I put in an 80-20 rule and say if 80% of the time you can eat healthy natural foods and 20% of the time you eat whatever you want, you know, I believe in moderation. We're humans and we do need to enjoy our food, but at the same time, majority of the time, I really want people to focus on seeing food as medicine. Healthy, whole, natural foods. If you could narrow down your top three most nutrient-dense foods that you could live off for the rest of your life, what would those top three power foods look like? Ooh, which of the superfoods should I choose? <laughs> well, if I were to narrow it, narrow it down to three foods, it would be raw organic pumpkin seeds, organic sweet potatoes, Oh, the last one, dark leafy greens. And the reason is because these foods have so much nutrition in them, you can't imagine. I can't even list them all. But for the most, raw pumpkin seeds are like basically like taking a multi-mineral supplement. It's rich in zinc, which most people are deficient in, uh, magnesium. It also helps with hormonal balance. It's also rich in, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, iron. So it's a great source of protein and um, iron for a lot of vegetarians, vegans. The second one is sweet potato. Now, sweet potato is really rich in a vitamin, a vitamin A and carotenoids, which is so good for skin, but it's also a cancer-fighting antioxidant, which is really, really nutritious um, and anti-aging. But it's also a really simple carbohydrate, so it's for energy. And if you eat the skin, it's rich in fiber. And then the last one is dark leafy greens, which a lot of people think, oh, it's a no brainer, but every different leafy green offers different amounts of uh, amazing nutrition, anywhere from calcium and iron and fiber and water, but it's also very alkalinizing to the body. And alkalinized pHs is what cancer cannot survive in. So circling back around to the cancer, just want to bring that in. Oh, I want to throw in a bonus, a drink. <laughs> yes, please. If there was one drink besides water that um, I could live off of, it would be matcha tea. Now, matcha is the powdered form of green tea. And it is another superfood that's got amazing amounts of um, antioxidant, antioxidants. Again, it's a cancer fighter very good for skin and instead of what coffee gives which was which is one to two hours of caffeine matcha is four to six hours so a little bit of a bit of a benefit there and because it's a leafy green again it's alkalinizing and it's so good for your skin in my course for nutrition for beauty matcha is talked about heavily if we want to live a longer and somewhat high quality life, then I think we all have to turn towards organic vegetables and leafy greens. Right. And we also have to take a conscious effort to be more gentle with our earth because the reason why our food isn't as healthy is because the soil is depleted and abused. It hasn't had time to rest our seafood is going to go extinct and it's filled with plastic because humans are dumping trash 
and there's mercury in the water. So it's, it's, much, it's a much larger perspective we have to take in terms of our food supply. The, the younger generations are becoming much more conscious and aware about that and taking more steps, proactive steps, to do something about it. Because it's our future we're talking about. And that's also the point of the content that you and I are both creating, is we don't want to rely on hospitals or big pharma or our politics to make those changes, I think. We just have to put out content like this to remind people, hey, there are small but very actionable things that we can do right now to fix the earth. What are your thoughts on generational trauma? If you are someone who's watching or listening, you realize, hey, my my family has left a lot of trauma somewhere in the system, but I wanna get rid of all that toxicity. Where do we start? I saw this reel which showed generational trauma from a visual standpoint. It was four cups. It was your great grandparents, no, no, your grandma, your mother, you, your daughter. And each, these two cups were super muddy as you poured them. But then when you poured it into your cup, you kept filling it with water till it became so diluted that it was barely brown. And then you poured it into your, your daughter's cup. And preferably you want that cup to be clear. This term really stuck with me when I first heard it. It's called cycle breaking. And I have been cycle breaking my whole life. It's basically unconditioning toxic beliefs that you have absorbed and taken with you that are stored in your subconscious and controls your thoughts and your decisions. You have to put a lot of awareness and energy into making sure you're aware, is this coming from the voices of my parents or is this the true me? And make decisions based off that. It's, mm, for some, some people may not be able to do this, but I've been doing this in, recently in the past few years, it's confronting. Well, confronting is a harsh word. It's teaching and setting examples of how I'm allowing people in my family to treat me. It's setting boundaries honoring boundaries, giving consequences when those boundaries are broken. And that is the healthiest and wisest and easiest way in order to cycle break is by starting with boundaries and being aware of um, those inner voices that are coming from how dad and mom would think and what they would say, etc. Before I get to my final question that I asked all of my guests, I just thought of something new that popped into my head as I was talking to you about. Yeah. I do believe that a lot of people um, have so much anxiety hovering mm -hmm. over them that it leads to diseases. So what, what can we do to free ourselves of that anxiety? I have a million and one answers for that. <laughs> But I, I feel like I need to take a step back and look at the root of all of those answers. I feel like people, we're, we're just caught up in life. We're going too fast. And a lot of us don't have time to just sit and reflect. I want viewers to know that you, in your palm is your yin and yang. It's the permission to go fast, but also permission to slow down and listen. When's the last time Emily said to you, oh, when's the last time you had a, a Sabbath or um, a down day or a me day? And people look at that, our culture looks at that and thinks, oh no, that's, we're workaholics. We work overtime, we work for 60 hours. You know, that's almost like a status symbol. It's not, it's not. In Eastern culture, meditation is valued. Uh, reflection is valued. All sorts of practices that were your silence silent and so I feel like we need to return and hold balance as a priority yeah capitalism won there I think <laughs> it took over and bingo. that's why we're... <laughs> bingo so um you know to add one last thing it's to practice discernment question everything you know our s there's so much about American culture that's beautiful inspiring but there's a lot of it that has an agenda behind it and is driven by capitalism or by some um, someone or an organization's self-interest and so you have to question is this really good for me is this going to bring value into my life is this good for my mental health 
rather than blindly follow the group that's going for it. So um, again, practice discernment, question everything, and always ask, is this good for me? Is this bring me value? Does this feel right? Thank you so much. The last question that I ask all of my guests is, what is something that you've been doing this week for your mental or physical well-being? Um, I'll give you an example. One of my guests said his was traveling or going outside and touching leaves because leaves have, you know, photochemicals that actually bring us joy and makes us happier. So I love like little tidbits like that, something kind of cute and creative that makes you happy. So Charlene, what's making you happy this week? I'll give you two answers. One may be a little out there, but that's who I am. That's my authentic self. And the other one is a little more, more general and relatable. Well, first of all, I always practice what I preach. And as someone who's an energy healer, who's very sensitive to energies and um, anything that has to do with nature, I connect a lot with it. So I went to my property, excuse me, land that's going to build, that has my future home being built. I connected with the energies there and I asked the spirit of that land for permission and their blessings to live, build, and reside there with an offering of blue corn. This is actually a Native American practice that was taught to me by an Apache shaman. So I went and put my hand on the earth. I connected with the energies of that plot of land, asking for permission, introducing myself, giving the offerings of corn, and I felt the reciprocation and the blessings and it was I almost cried it just made my day but to answer your question about what's something I do to stay healthy and it's new it's always trying some new things I've never done that before trying new things that are unheard of un unfathomable but you never know until you try so that's my authentic answer I tried pickleball for the first time and you know that's something I never thought I would do but I'm um, trying classes trying new things all the time and never stop believing that you're too old for XYZ the sky's the limit and you never know what what's gonna happen until you try it it'll keep your brain young it'll keep your energy flowing and youthful and it will keep you wondering and inspired about everything that is and will be with with uh, our reality. I feel so invigorated. Aww. Like I literally like want to go outside and touch the ground and have that like beautiful moment as well. To follow Charlene, you can find her on charlenewangwellness.com. Bye everyone.